The land in, in Toronto is crazy expensive. We looked for about a year and a half in Toronto, but we wanted to be in the neighborhood because we work here, our roots are here, this is our neighborhood. So we didn't want to go far. And everything was over a million and needing serious renovations. So we decided to use the space that we already owned yep. and go for it and build our dream home. How did this all come about? Because you threw up some containers, right? How many? We got three vertically okay. stacked. Okay. Right here, right? So three and a bit. Because we, okay. we, we built a garage in this little area right here. That section, that's a container up to there. And then that, we have a little bunky like sit, so we can store all our stuff on it. Okay. Okay. You really don't see any container here. So you didn't. Wow. That's so all the container you see is just off the out the window, right? Yeah. So there's one underneath, this is the second one, and then there's one above us, which we'll see in our master bedroom. So we left the posts, and the roof is exposed, and then the outside is basically the container doors open for the decks. When you go outside, want to join? Oh. Prowl's a little bit afraid of heights. Oh, okay. he doesn't enjoy it as much. Well, then we'll do you. <laughs> yeah, it's like therapy for me, you know? So we welded the doors open, we weld the frame, we weld the frame to the, to the doors and just drop the grate in it for, for a deck, you know? Yeah. But it's strong, it's not going anywhere. If I'm not here, believe me, it's safe. Because believe me, I hate heights, man. For real, it's, this place is like, a, it's like therapy. Because it keeps going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you go up here, it's even crazier. You know, because you're looking through two different, and it's, I've learned to cope with it, but it's like my, my daily, like, yeah, yeah, you can deal. Yeah, you can deal going. You know, give me so like. So you did leave the doors open, even though you didn't leave a lot of containers showing. This, you decided that you wanted to see it. Yeah, it was just oh, a yeah. practical way of building a deck. Because these doors are like ridiculously strong. So it's structural? It's structural, yeah. So the doors themselves are a part of the structure and you just weld a metal frame to the base of it, right? This is basically a cradle that we just, and then we brought the grates up and just dropped them in. With shipping containers, you don't spend too much time building. The idea was to drop them in place. You know, we dropped it all in one day. And the original design called for 13 shipping containers actually. But when we got to the actual nitty gritty of it, when we were actually getting down to it and saying, okay, we're going to do this, we realized that the crane that we needed back here is a 60 ton to drop it. Because you'd have to drop it like, you know, 70 feet horizontally that way. So imagine the size crane you need to drop it. And the crane couldn't fit. Because this is the back. This is the back alley. It's a back alley. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, a, this, is, this is the famous graffiti alley. We've been here for 18 years, so we've kind of watched it evolve. There was a time when it was like, all the murals that were popping up, all the kids were doing them illegally, so to speak, right? And the city had mandated at one point that they were going to paint off all the graffiti in the lanes and slap it on people's... Uh, Taxes. Tax, yeah. But if you declared it as art, right, then they'd leave it alone. So then the movement started to declare all the pieces of art, you know what I'm saying? And the neighbors started putting these on their doors because they didn't want this, for example, on their garage door, where the taggers come and tag, because the kids, the kids know each other. There's a time when that was a novel idea. So you were, you've seen this evolve, you've been here 18 yeah. years? Yeah, 18 I've been years. here 18 years. Actually, my entire adult life has been spent in this neighborhood. What's up, bro? What's up? All it down, okay? What's up, bro? Come on. Come on, boy. What are you doing? Yeah. This neighborhood was like, it's the old garment district from back in the day. That's why this neighborhood is called the Art and Design District. Ah, oh, he is beautiful, man. One love, King. Okay? That's where a lot of artists hung out, you know, musicians, actors. You know, rent was cheaper back then. Yeah. Is it awesome back then? 
objected to having. And I bought then because I opened I opened a restaurant. This was my apartment. This is the, the apartment in the front. It used to be my studio upstairs, and that's where I, I used to live and, and work. Who's there now? And we rent it out. And no one can afford yeah. rent over here anymore. You know, yeah. it's so cool. It's too cool. Like all the people who made the neighborhood interesting yeah. can't afford to be over here anymore. Like real estate's crazy. So you own this land, so you thought, okay, we can yeah. afford to buy something new. Exactly, yeah. so we might as well use what we have because we were gonna have to renovate a different house anyway. Yeah. So this way we got to start from scratch. Well, kind of scratch because the, the restaurant was already there and we had to work around that. Like, we didn't want to close the restaurant because it's right. like, you're losing serious cash, right? So, we decided to build it on these stilts, have the stilts come through the restaurant. See this overhead garage door? This was an open air section of the building. Like, there was nothing there, right? And the idea was the patio was this, part of the building was this area here, which would be outside. And then, okay. so we dug, so this is the foundation for it. For containers, you need to put the foundation piers on the corners. All the weight bearing is on the corners of the container. So on the corners, we have these huge concrete piers. This is on another column, right? It goes straight through the ceiling. And there's the other one right there in the kitchen. And this is another column right here. Mm. So that's one side of the building, an entire side, right? This was always my patio. See, this was the old structure that we cut out. Because you can see the container goes straight through the structure. Oh, so it was like a shed or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Right, so we cut this, we just cut right into it and drop it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it took years of planning to like get it done. We built the, the container somewhere else. You know, I had the cutouts done somewhere else. So you knew that you, whatever you did had to be something that you could build while the restaurant was going. Exactly. Yeah. So in a way, that's why this makes sense, because it's prefab. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You can build it somewhere else, exactly. right? Right. And right. just drop it in. And these were dropped, the guys dropped them blind. Like, he couldn't see what he was doing. Because he had to drop it behind this house. And the crane operator was, like, right here. The, cra the guy who was operating the crane was operating, so the first one, that we dropped behind the house, he couldn't see what he was doing. Rod, do we have room to come down for the wires on those doors? Yeah, you got three feet. Okay, what It was just like listening to the guy explain. Like down. Down, down, down to the left. And he dropped it with four inches to spare on the side, you know? Go left a little bit. Rod, just keep it straight, Rod. We're going to to the left. Shipping containers are made out of cord and steel. They never rust. These, these things travel on the high seas for years, you know, before they become useless. So, yeah, it will never go anywhere. It's solid. So, you continue some cord tension? Yeah, well, that's actually not cord tension. It's like, it's, because you can't afford cord and steel, man. So I, I use cold roll sheet metal, like a, you know, 18 gauge. You spray it with a mixture of like a you know, vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, equal parts, and two teaspoons of salt. You spray it, right? It rusts it overnight. This happens in a day. It's incredible. I mean, right? You see all this texture, I love it. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. You can paint with it after a while, is my point, right? Not everybody can paint with vinegar and... <laughs> On any surface, Carl is just a painter, so he can paint with paint, he can paint with hair. Is the art on the wall um, oh, also no. yours? Uh, that one is. That one is, that's the one, those are, I did a series in hair. Example, that's real hair. Oh. So you're an artist and you understand construction. Yeah, I grew just, up on a farm, you know. So you were always building Yeah, things. as a kid, that's what we did, you know. Yeah. So I learned to use a saw at a very young age, you know what I mean? Like, but a hand saw, you know? Right. 
You know what I mean? Like when I when I first time I bought a circular saw, I was like, I'm living in heaven. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no real work. It's like what? So we it's it's okay, so I, right. I aced it. See I forced anything it. outside? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. So quarter. No, no okay. it meant to look like it. When I quoted it, it was like twelve G's for just the facade. Like that's just for the metal. Is that not it's not even putting it up. You know? Twelve thousand dollars. And what did it cost you? That's like five hundred bucks for the metal. And you know, and 40 good. bucks in chemicals. The windows on the side of the container here are actually skylights. These are skylights that we attach to the side, and they have great R value. And you know, you get to like, yeah, to a point where it's almost uncomfortable, right? You see, but you can see all the way down. You know? So crazy. <laughs> Wow, how do you come with that idea? It's just how to play. Right? Kind of like being a kid, you know? Yeah. But you get a lot of perspective because it goes out eight inches from this structure right here, you know? And it's fun. Try it, there's this sense of you go and like try keep it. going and you keep going and you go all the way. Keep no, going. Keep, no going. Keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so then to add it to this stuff, is not a container, but it's uh, Yeah, this is all conventional. This is a solid wall built on the wall that was downstairs. So the wall runs from here, 10 inch concrete wall runs from here to here. So this, this from there down to the ground is a concrete block wall. And see where the container ends right here? Where the post is? Okay. That's another 10 inch concrete wall from the ground up. You know, but we built it so that we could be back. So when you're up here, not much dust is created. Design was based on this, how to keep the restaurant open. You know what I mean? Like, that's how we're feeding ourselves. Our other apartment, you basically walk through a door. That's where the two buildings connect. So Carl could actually walk through the door and go from full construction into, honey, I'm home. <laughs> and we sit down for dinner and then he could walk back out and continue working until the wee hours of the night. You didn't borrow money from a bank. Yeah. No, your, no, no. It was all your the money yeah, you were making. Yeah, your yeah, house. well, from our sold our house. We sold our house. Okay. Happy and moved our giant family into a 600 square foot apartment, which is in the front of the building. <laughs> so we moved the entire family into there, and basically hung out while this was getting Four. built. Three years. Pause, come say hello. <laughs> Who sleeps up there? You like it? Do you have more stuff up there? Do you have toys? Oh my god. Lots of yeah. stuff. Did you build the bed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is 316 angle iron. Right, so we built this subframe, right? This whole thing is a subframe I built and then brought this frame. This frame, just this, mm -hmm. all of this. We brought this subframe in, okay? And this was a separate build as well. So we built all of this in my shop and then we brought it up and built this structure because this is the saddle that the frame sits into. Make sense? Okay. So this structure, is a saddle essentially, and then there's another saddle over here, right? That com that makes the bookshelf over here, and then we brought the frame in and sat it inside the saddle, and just welded it together. You could do a lot of work outside. Of yeah, you know, and then I actually came in here. You can see the burns on the floor where my MIG sparked. It's a little brown. Oh, yeah. That's where my MIG kind of like burnt through the cardboard, you know. So we cardboard the whole thing out and built it and then brought in the monkey bars. <laughs> but it all holds very well, you know? Yeah. That way you can fit a quite a large bed up there and... It could fit a queen yeah. size, but we put in yeah. a double so they could have like, little books on the side, their water at night. Are you gonna open it? Well, yeah, yeah. So this is, a, this is eventually gonna be a deck for the girls. And we're gonna build a deck out to the chimney and rail it out. So the great will cantilever over okay. and then we'll have a deck for the girls out here as well. You know, with, a, with the same kind of great as we use on the other ones, you know. 
you know, it's getting a break from the restaurant to actually do some work, you know? And that's why it took three years, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, it takes, yeah, it's a deal, it's a, yeah. Yeah, man. That's nice. So there is a skylight here, huh? Yeah. We couldn't put uh, windows on the... On, on that side, right? On the, yeah, because the property is built to the line. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting in windows, we put in skylights. This is a very small bathroom. It's less than four feet wide, you know, but it's, you know, the light gives it that, um... It makes it feel larger, for sure. Much, much. You know, if you see inside here, it's the light that comes in. It's ridiculous, you know, it's just... It's great to take a shower in here in the morning. So much light. Yeah, a lot of light. Pretty easy to do? Or no? I mean, skylights are kind of tricky, right? Um, no, I just gotta make sure. They, they build them way better than they used to, okay. for sure. You know, and it's not it's not built into my roof structure. I can just if this one fails, I just buy another one the same okay. size. You know, not that expensive. Okay. And you just like pop it on, screw back on. You got another twenty years. So it makes you know? sense. Oh, and it's cheaper than the window. Believe me. You ever you ever you ever come across udukuri technique? It's a Japanese technique where they they router out the lines in the door in in the wood. You know, like wood grain. It has soft and hard. So the darker the green is, the harder the wood. So you can brush out the soft parts of the wood with a grinder wheel. And then you paint it with a bunch of paints, layering. And then you look for the art in it, right? And then you wet sand it back. So you wet sand it. It's, this is just ply, regular ply. But cheap, paint it a bunch of times, grind it out, and sand it back with a wet. Because if you dry sand it, it melts the paint. If you wet sand it, it takes layers off. It's almost like uh, pieces of, uh, of art as well, right? Yeah, this one's like Monet's water to lilies. That one's Monet. The idea really was to have the entire house be art, right? So instead of just being a boring door, and it doesn't take a space, they, they are yeah, slab. Yeah, it doesn't do the... I've never built a swinging door, man. I, I can't deal with them. I don't know why people swing doors. Like, why? <laughs> like, uh, the entire three feet that that door swings, is dead space. Like, yeah, you can't put anything kids in that. I always have a hard time with doors that don't slide. <laughs> no, because they, they can't understand it. Make people go to their, their friend's house, right? Like, why aren't your doors sliding? Like, what is this? <laughs> oh, you swing your doors. It's just like, it's just like, you know, why? This is the big girl's room. I'm working on their bunk bed. So it built exactly the same way as the other one, but instead of this one, I put a frame on the wall. We're gonna put a box. This is where the cupboards are gonna be coming out about here, right? Mm -hmm. Desk is gonna be right here, in a similar fashion. The same deal with the plywood up here and the plywood on the side. Oh, on this side, so we were planning to do the udukuri on all sides, right? Mm -hmm. But then while we were building it, we were like, wow, this is beautiful too. Yeah, so is. This, is, this is a wood pre-treated. The floors we had painted by an artist friend who has many paintings on our walls. What is it? The Portuguese beach sand. Portuguese beach sand? Yes, my, my wife wanted to be reminded of Portugal. So this is the same artist, Leandro. That did the floor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. That's all Leandro's work as well. Now you see a lot of containers. You're sort of a container bedroom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which we love because it's both cozy and very open. And uh, the sound is amazing. Like the, when you, when it rains, you hear the raindrops like on a little tin can, you know. Yes. Yeah. The roof. Into yeah, the sound travels differently, so it's really nice. Is there insulation above that, or is that just like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It has um, two pound uh, solid styrofoam. Like really, the entire space is R48 in the walls. Like, yeah, you know, it, the walls have six inches of two pound spray foam. Okay. Right? So the spray foam adds to the structure as well. It adds about 30% to the structure of the building. You know, it makes it just structurally more rigid. But we kept the ceiling, because so we wanted to keep the ceiling. So we decided to insulate the ceiling from the top down. So this entire 14 inch is filled with uh, spray foam. 
you know? But you wanted that feel of the roof being... Yeah, we wanted the exposed nature of what you're actually in. Yeah, so and then we have our yoga nook because we love to do yoga, especially at night. But here it's beautiful. It's become the favorite place to hang out. And then again, we have another deck out here, which is the sunniest spot. It's tons of light. It's a wonderful place to hang out. Wildlife actually. Back alley wildlife. Raccoons. Raccoons. Rats. Possums. Skunks. Possums, skunks. Squirrels. Crackheads. <laughs> some trees. Some. Yeah, man. You still have trees like buildings. in the city. Where do you get this? Like, you know what I mean? Actually, all the views have been the greatest surprise. Wonderful surprise because so you, don't, you don't know until you actually go up, right? So having these trees here, this wonderful because you don't feel like you're in the middle of the city in the back alley at all. We also have a view of the CN Tower which was a really nice surprise. <laughs> so we made this area kind of like a walk-in closet but that you could also do other things with. But making sure we could hide everything. I just kept it simple. We don't have a lot of stuff and we don't want a lot of stuff. So. And then this is the master bathroom. We got the two skylights above both the shower and the bath. So nice to come here and take a shower under the sunlight. That natural light yeah. changes your mood, and especially in Canada where we go through these long, cold winters, and uh, both Carl and I suffer from winter blues. And you're in here, you don't know what it's like outside. It's sunny, it's bright, it's warm. So part of the design is we have a water line and a plug for a drip irrigation system, right? And the idea is so from here to the ceiling, we'll have a wall on the gar a garden wall. So when you're in the tub, this is your view. Yeah. I'll get to it. Is this that is wood glue? No. Yeah, this is wood glue. MDF, you see it? MDF, um, wood glue, and stain. This is my wife. And that's the same portrait that's on the wall from the alleyway, if you see it. From the alley, it's not the, uh... I like how all the stairs are so open. You don't ever do the, um, you know, keep it really light. Yeah. Floating stairs, right? Yeah. There's a metal subframe that's bolted onto the concrete wall. And these are six by two inch C channel that came out of the wall that was welded onto a metal plate behind the wall. Okay. And then the, the sea channel just came out and then we wrapped it. It's great. It's so light. And we have the bunkie, the little garage, on the here. It's a mess because of course it's where we hide everything. So, yeah. This is a bit of a crawl space. And a lot of tools and a lot of shoes. Four seasons. Yeah. A lot of storage in there. Back here is the mechanical room. This is some more Urukuri. And then this, this is the laundry, mechanical room. And this is all our heating, electrical panel, wash station, laundry, you know. And then we have in here, two piece bathroom. I like the brick wall. No, it's a full brick wall. It's a, oh, it is? <laughs> but it's actual brick cut, the ends cut off, yeah. and then you lay them all one by one. You know that you can buy them in these mesh. You can get the real vintage cuts, right? And lay them on, and then tuck point it yourself. That's why it looks very That's why it looks like, yeah. Organic and uh... Um... Is there a little step ladder that you can roll over? My vertically challenged wife. For the shorties in the house, there's a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> my little girls too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So they can wash their hands and we don't have to have the big stools around, you know. Just well, this is an overhead. This is for a sliding door. But you turn it on its side. And then we just welded, we built this frame. And then, as you can see inside here, this is the part that would connect to the door. So we have the sliding mechanism here with yeah. the, the wheels, polyurethane wheels. And then we bolt on this. And on the here, and on the back end, we have these 
like these little roller blade wheels and then they're really smooth. They are. They yeah. Are really so they make the whole experience like really, really fluid, you know? You can like, it can take 300 pounds, no problem, you know? And then you lock it. This is the mechanism to lock it so that it doesn't, while you're up here, if you're like doing this, you could lock it to the wall and lock it in place, right? But no one ever locks it because it's fairly stable. Well, these kids just love to swing around in it anyways. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can so imagine. It's kind of a roller coaster ride. No joke, they come on and just like, woo! Uh, we know. Oh, side. oh, side to side. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Other than that, it's just a big open kitchen, we love it. Yeah. Yeah. And Anna teaches, that's the thing she should tell you. So oh, right. we didn't put an island in the space. Carl really wanted an island in the kitchen, but I teach yoga in this room. The part of the design was so I can teach classes here. Right. So the kitchen transforms. <laughs> the table slides into this area. And then we move the couch to the side. And I've got a big open studio space to teach. The space had many criteria. We had to fit the whole family. We had to be able to do big family dinners and have people over. We had to have parties here. We also moved the table over here, create a bar, put a DJ right here. <laughs> so we didn't want to spend two thousand dollars on a chandelier. So I found these bulbs. I think they were like forty-five bucks a bulb, bulb with a string. And this housing is a fake mantle. Like a fake no. fireplace mantle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seemed to suit the purpose, you know what I mean? They built it hollow already. So I, I turned it on its side, ran all the electrical through it, and chandelier. The restaurant business is stressful. Which is why I don't really want to go, I don't want to travel too much to work. You know what I mean? I just, I just want to be on top of what I'm doing. And it's remarkably easier when it's just like, you know, your family is just upstairs, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's not that stressful, like really. Yeah. It's just, you just gotta get a lot done every day. Yeah, exactly. My day is full. So this side is for the apartment, and that side goes to the restaurant. So it's split. It's split, the bottom container, right? So this side is... So this is the other side of the container. This house is all, it should house beer boxes. <laughs> but, you know, I've been painting. The containers are cut out. So this is a container. This is the old building, right? This is, this is the end of the 20 foot container, the first one. You can see right? where the- You can the see the roof right here. Okay. Best way to see, right? Yeah, and that's where the container ends. Right. right. But this door was one of the doors we took off the container that we turned this way for stories. <laughs> and that stores the, the empties, the extra beer that we're trying to keep cold. You know what I mean? Restaurant stuff. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And this is a bar. This is the wall that the other wall was built on. And you know, this kind of thing would support three stories. No, no, no. It, yeah. took, it five. will take, it will take five easy. Okay. Like, it's huge. Like, it's a 10 inch wall, man. That's my MIG. This is one. This is the end of the old building. And this, this is one of the concrete piers. This is where the wall is. That's a concrete support wall. That's a concrete support okay. wall. Picks up the That's weight of the structure that we floated above this building right here. Because nothing, this is all crap. It can't really support the weight of what's upstairs. So we had to build these pillars. And this is one of those pillars. And it floats. The entire structure floats on, on five pillars. Mm. Oh, we're just getting ready now. All right, all right, all right, I'm all right, all right, all right, all right. Mmm. Which is it? Fried pickles. Mama, who is this? But this is where I live. It's no different from upstairs. I feel the same way about the restaurant that I do my apartment. 
because I gotta go through it every day. Yeah, it's it's July. July. Mm. Yeah, it is your life. And, and you only have problems when you get in that cognitive dissonance or like, oh, this is not my life. It is your life, like deal. So that's what we're doing. We're living above it and dealing because the commute, you know, you know how much time two hours is if you spend that with your kids? Awesome. This is what I'm toying with these days. Epoxy, so we play. So this is cloth on epoxy. So I've been playing with the African kente cloth. I glue it onto wood, and then you pour epoxy on it, you know? Keep messing with it, trying to figure it out. And because we have parties all the time, these are those regular, they're like regular Home Depot tables, right? And you take this away, but this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So. Because we, we, tra we transform the space quickly at night, right? From like dining room to like party room. You like being on the outside. Yeah, this is where I build everything. This is my neighbor's garage that I built for my neighbor. But my neighbor moved to Mexico, right? And gave me his garage. <laughs> this is more storage. My table saw is inside here. My ladders are there. Table saw, chop saw, bicycle. <laughs> this is my, yeah, it's my shop. That's cool. Ladder, so where yeah. I build everything in the attic. So the door, did somebody, how did that? In the, early two, in the early 2000s, we started colonizing the hood, you know what I mean? It's like taking, it, taking over wall space in the neighborhood, you know? Like when it was an idea, you know, that the thing to do, as opposed to fighting it, you encourage it and have you know, the guys who are established in the graffiti community paint the doors, like paint the walls. And then the mural will stay because the taggers won't tag it because they know who these guys are. They, everyone knows how everyone does their work, right? So they don't bother it. So these have been here for years, you know? And this wall, because there's no consensus, we leave it for the taggers, you know what I mean? This is my big kahuna. Yeah, this is where we grill. This is, this is our smoker, man. And we colonize the, we colonize the alley. Because no one really cares, it's just, and the people are open, my neighbors come over, so I'm like, I feed my neighbors, you know? <laughs> so we just eat and, you know, eat and live in peace, man. <laughs>